comes from Zechariah chapter 8. The word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts shall be called the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with staff in hand because of their great age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, even though it seems impossible to the remnant of this people in these days, should it also seem impossible to me, says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them to live in Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in faithfulness and in righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel comes from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and will be called the Son of God. Excuse me. <clears throat> and now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And in those days Mary set out and went with haste to Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? The mother of my Lord has come to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. As is wont uh, to me because of the sports teams I follow, I often get asked, so back, so best of bread, how the Bears doing? <laughs> now, I usually respond with crappy. They're doing crappy. Now, not this year. They are currently in first place, and I'm not sure how long they'll be there. But most of the time, when somebody asks me about my favorite sports teams, whether it's the Bears or the Cubs or the Minnesota Wild, I usually always say, they're crap. Because really, most of the time, they are. I mean, think about my beloved Chicago Cubs for 101 years. They have been crappy. And they've gotten close a few times and broken my heart. But it almost seems to me the that it would seem just almost impossible now that I would ever see the Cubs in a World Series. I can't even imagine it. You know, the Bears won the Super Bowl a few years ago, so I can imagine that, but I just can't imagine the Cubs getting to the World Series, and what that would be like, and what a blubbery mess, and how I would not be able to work for like two weeks, because I would just have to stress about every game. But it just seems so impossible. That's why I find Mary, so interesting. Because the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and says, Hey Mary, guess what? You're a virgin, but you're going to have a baby. And not only any baby, not just any baby. This is going to be the Son of God. What's amazing to me is Mary believes Gabriel. There's not one instance in which Mary doubts what Gabriel has said. She asks more of a practical question. Um, like, how's that going to happen? And, well, the Holy Spirit will come 
upon you, you will be. Mary believes Gabriel, despite the impossibility of it all. If an angel, if the angel Gabriel showed up right now and said, Pastor Brad, I gotta tell you, next year the Cubs are gonna win the World Series, my first reaction is I'd probably pee in my pants, is I'd be scared. An angel sitting right next to me. The second thing, though, to be honest, is I'd be like, there's no way. I, I must have taken some weird hallucinogen or something. I don't understand what's going on because I could not believe that, it, that the Cubs would do that. It'd be impossible. But Mary, Mary believes. And Gabriel says to Mary, for nothing will be impossible with God. You know, I'm not sure we believe in the impossible anymore in our world. Don't we often look upon our lives and see what's not right? What not, what's not wrong? I gotta, I'll tell you how I was seeing this. Actually, while I was seeing him, they looked at, up on our beautiful trees. And on that tree, the angel is tilted just slightly backwards. I think it was straight when we put it up there on Monday. But I think as it's been watered and vacuumed around and got bumped, that the angel's now bumped back. And that bothers me. It's going to drive me crazy, and I'm going to go get a ladder tomorrow. I'm going to climb up there, I'm going to fix it. I don't see the rest of the beauty of that tree. The lights, the ornaments, the care, and the many hours spent by some of you in this very room decorating these trees. Because we just look on the things that we can't do, the things that are wrong. We're so cynical. We think the worst of people and of situations that we no longer sometimes believe in the impossibility of life, the miracles that occur each and every day. And I think that's Mary's lesson to us, that in God, all things are possible. You know, in that, when Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, she has proof of what Gabriel has said to her because Elizabeth's child leaps in the womb and Elizabeth has this wonderful confession of blessed is he as she who believed in what the Lord has told her. That this is indeed true. You know, our proof of the impossibility of God comes in that baby that will be born from Mary's womb. It comes not because this baby will grow and heal the sick and drive out demons, it comes because this baby will be born and then will die for you. Little old you, cynic you, sinner you, disbelieving you. This child, this son of God will die for you so that you would have eternal life. That Jesus is our proof that in God all things are possible. Because if I can be saved and you can be saved, then God can do amazing things in our lives and is doing amazing things in your life today. So may the Holy Spirit come upon you this moment and this day that you would believe in the impossibility of all that God has done for you in Jesus Christ who has been born and died on a cross and risen from a grave to give you eternal life, to give you hope give you life. And if God is so kind as to send an angel to me to tell me the Cubs will win the World Series next year, I'm going to believe it. Because in God, all things are possible. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. Let's rise and sing hymn 257 verses 5 through 8 this time.